Hello everybody, welcome to this Blender time lapse in which we're going to hard surface model this sci-fi pistol you see before you. Now, this is the first one I modeled, and then I decided to make a time lapse video of it. So there may be a few mesh differences, but more or less, this is the same gun I'm going to create and talk about the hard surface modeling process as we go through it. So let's begin. First I'm going to start off with a cube and I'm using box cutter and hard ops add-ons for this. These are paid add-ons but there are free alternatives like fast carve out there that you could use or you could just use the base blender. And I'm starting with the grip here so I've sort of sliced out the grip with the ingon tool and I'm going to start beveling certain areas. I decided to actually start with this outer bevel uh, try to fix some of these uh, clipping issues first and then uh, using hard ops alt x mirror along the x axis saves a lot of time and then I go in and I start beveling out these curves messing with the, uh, the topology along the way to make sure they're kind of spaced out enough to where they don't glitch into each other and cause any massive shading issues and this, uh, this whole video is sped up to three times the speed. Um, I believe this is about a 20 minute long video, so it took about an hour and 20 once everything was said and done to model this gun the second time around. The first time it took a little longer. Uh, so now I'm gonna, again, just kind of what we did before, uh, start off with a big cube and take the, the Ingon slice tool and start slicing out this sort of main body of the gun making sure to kind of clip into the handle there and just gonna scale it down uh, kind of fit in with the overall theme of the gun this is a rather thin pistol I'm going for and speaking of 3d and design when a weapon is more thin it sort of tells the viewer or the player that it it's a lower caliber it doesn't pack as big of a punch and that's fine this is more of an energy pistol in my mind anyways, so, you know, it's science fiction. Uh, doesn't really have to follow the laws of physics or normal gun behavior. So, uh, yeah, just bringing in a, a cylinder and sort of just extruding it outward. I'm going to sharpen it so it looks all nice and neat. And from here, I think I'm going to start, let's see, what do I do here? Okay, I'm going to start uh, on this trigger guard area, the bottom section of the gun. And to get this curve here, we could go in and we could uh, try beveling it to, to look appropriate. But we can also just use a cutter with box cutter, put in a circle, and then move it to where we want it. And just like that, we have a curve. We can apply that Boolean modifier and then bevel it. And just like that, we, we're starting to get something that's, you know, resembling a gun. And when you model things, this is something that a lot of beginners, including me, are guilty of. You don't want to get bogged down in the details until the very end. You want to stick with broad shapes, just broad strokes, and it's very easy to get excited and to think, okay, I need to start adding in these details now. Ugh, sorry, but that's not what you want to do. That will slow down your modeling process, potentially even ruin your mesh. You need to get the big picture down first. Uh, so I just separated these two parts of that main mesh and I'm gonna like scale it in just to give it some some more of a profile then uh, over here I decided to start adding in some detail to the grip and it may have been too soon for that and you know maybe I should have waited but here it didn't didn't uh, I would have had to do it anyways and it's not an insane amount of detail so what I'm doing is just uh, taking an edge along an ingon and gonna kind of ex you know place more and move them about to fit the profile of this inner piece of the grip here 
and then we're going to extrude it outwards at the end using the inset and gun cut and box cutter to make it its own object and start beveling those edges to give it a more curved profile. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now that I've done that. There we go. The grip is uh, looking good. Just going to extrude it outwards after I've applied those modifiers. And then here for the trigger guard, I'm going to create the, the trigger area, just cutting it out with box cutter with a cube and then beveling those edges. And then I can bring in for the trigger, I just used a cube and sort of match the profile of the reference image here that I found on ArtStation. And then I actually go in with another tool and I inset just to add some more geometry, something interesting to the trigger. And there I messed up so then I can just uh, kind of edit my cutter to before I apply the boolean modifier so I don't have to just futz around with the tool all day. And then I'm going to mirror that, get those uh, details on both sides. Over here I kind of want to add in uh, some detail to that bottom piece so I'm just going to make it its own object and when you do that with box cutter sometimes you get mess, mesh issues so you're going to get good at fixing sort of merging vertices together if you use any sort of box cutter or fast carve tool. Again, fast carve is a free version, so just Google that if you want something free but not as versatile for hard surface modeling as box cutter would be. So here I realize these don't fit and I'm kind of futzing around, but I end up just uh, <coughs> editing the bevel on that object to fix it. Sort of scaling it outward and it still looks still looks what I wanted it to look like, so I was good there. I'm trying to figure out how to tackle this sort of in cut here. It's sort of at a an odd angle. It looks cool, but yeah, you know, I sort of have to tackle how I sort of have to think about how I want to tackle it. So I'm just gonna come in with a cutter and rotate it and get that sort of shape. And then I'm gonna duplicate it and then apply it to this one down there and sort of angle it in like that. And that gets the, that general shape. And then I'm sort of messing around with how I could add uh, some more angles to it, but I end up just sort of scrapping all that. As I'm watching this, I, I kind of realize how I could have done it and actually achieved what I wanted, but at the time, I couldn't figure it out, so maybe I'll go and fix that later. Yeah, I just sort of uh, line these up the best I can and scale up that geometry just a bit to make it look better, mirror that. And just like that we have this uh, cool looking end piece for the gun. Now here I wanted to, to bevel it, but in the reference image it's not just a, a straight bevel, it's at an angle. And this ended up making things more difficult to deal with later on. Uh, specifically the site, so if I had to redo it I probably wouldn't do it at an angle, I'd probably just do it straight across. That's how my original gun was and it looked just fine. But uh, yeah, so we adding in sort of this cutter here to make a, a rail system to mount our side on. We have to rotate it out since it is 
moving outwards. Uh, end up getting a lot of beveling issues, so end up going with something like this after I apply the, the mirror modifier there. Down here, I wanted to add some sort of uh, rail system, or at least something that you know looks cool, like a rail system. So, just ended up uh, making a cutter and then using an array, just like that. We have a, uh, a rail system on the bottom of the trigger guard. You can mount a flashlight or a laser pointer or something like that. There, just I'm merging the vertices together, uh, so I don't have any shading issues. Adding in something with a knife tool to alleviate more shading issues. Coming in with a cylinder to kind of match the reference image. How it, there is a cut there, but there's also a uh, cylinder underneath. And here, let's see. Gonna add in sort of a safety slash mag release slash it's a sci-fi gun, so you don't really have to explain every button that's on there, sort of thing. Just something to add in some more geometry and detail. Uh, ended up not having a mag release. I guess this would be more of a safety switch or like a you know semi full auto button. Um, but you know you can explain it in whatever way you want, you know, it's a, it's a sci-fi gun, so, just coming in here, and then to, to make it look better, I'm going to add in a place for that to sit back behind it, and then just put it back in there, and rotate it to make it look like it's on one of the two settings. Here, just using a cylinder to create the barrel. Again, trying to match the, match the reference image here as well as I can, but at the same time taking some liberties in 3D space. And here I don't like how big the barrel is. Uh, even though in my, you know, it's an energy weapon, uh, it does look a little big for me, especially with how thin the gun is, so I sort of just scale that down lock it to the y-axis so it doesn't distort. Not really sure what this thing is back here, but it's on the reference image and I kind of like how it looks, so just going to throw that in there. Let's tackle the site. Now, due to the funkiness of this rail system and how it sort of goes, you know, it's tapered, uh, end up bailing with the original idea of using a Boolean modifier to conform it to the rail system because there's just a ton of issues I didn't want to mess with when. Just simply placing a cube on it looks almost as good.
while I'm creating the sites here, something that uh, I, I, as a beginner in Blender, I didn't understand for a while is not everything has to be a part of the same object in the mesh. There's no rule saying that you know you don't have to extrude out um, of the same mesh a billion times to make all these separate objects. They can be their own objects, even when creating game assets. Like if I were to uh, down in the bottom right, you can see how many tries is in this, but this is with the the modifiers applied. So after I take apart those modifiers, um, this is actually a fairly low poly mesh, and it could be game ready with just a simple UV unwrapping and texturing. Creating more details for the grip here, uh, sorting to come together. Now, the first time I created this gun, I actually had an in cut where the magazine was, but here I try a different method, something a little easier, just taking a cube. Um, make sure to set the origin to geometry when you do this. Just like that, it looks good enough for our intentions here. Now let's go ahead and start adding in some more detail into this mesh here. Just some more cuts, and we're gonna use the array tool to copy them. The hard ops slash, I think it's hard ops is the array tool there. Uh, it's so easy to use. So easy. You just press Q on your object and you can set up an array pretty much instantly. It's awesome. When I first bought the hard ops box cutter package, I was actually very displeased with it. Um, I use right click to select and there's a few hotkeys that interfere with that kind of learning these tools as well was uh, sort of daunting at first until I watched a few videos and realized it's it's actually not so I had originally bought it and then refunded it like that night and when, when I did that I still had it uh, on my PC so I messed around with it and then once it was like the next day. I had messed around with it a little more just to see if I could fix those issues. And I was like, okay, I need to buy this again. You know, it's pay for it because it's definitely going to be a big part of my workflow here. And so I did. It's a great add-on. Just like that, the gun is uh, starting to come together. And you can really sit here as long as you want and add in more and more details, but also a lot of those you can do in the uh, texturing process as well with normal maps and hard surface textures, sorry. Uh, and just like that, uh, getting closer and closer to the end of the modeling process here. Just like that, going to create some edge loops, bevel them, scale them down. And here what we have is actually the, the gun I modeled beforehand. Uh, this is what it could look like after the texturing process and substance painter and bringing it back in. So I hope you enjoyed this speed modeling process. Um, hopefully you learned something. I had fun making it. Yeah, thanks for watching.